My name is Sophia Carter, and I'm 29 years old. I always thought that love and trust were the foundation of a family. I believe that marrying Ethan was the beginning of a beautiful life filled with dreams, stability, and unconditional support. But that trust was shattered, and it all started with one piece of paper. It was a crisp Friday afternoon, and I came home early from work, hoping to surprise Ethan with dinner. I carried a bag of groceries in one hand and my keys in the other, smiling at the thought of his reaction to my homemade lasagna, his favorite. But as I stepped onto the porch, my heart sank. There was an envelope taped to the door. I frowned, setting the groceries down to pull it off. My name was written on the front in bold letters, but inside was a cold, formal eviction notice. The words blurred as I read them over and over, hoping I was misunderstanding, you are hereby notified to vacate the premises within thirty days. I stumbled inside, the paper trembling in my hands. Ethan. I called, my voice shaking. What is this? What's going on? No answer. The house was eerily quiet, and it felt like the walls were closing in. I dropped my bag on the kitchen counter and sat down clutching the letter. My mind raced. How could we be evicted? This was our house. We had saved for years to afford the down payment. Every corner of this house held memories, movie nights in the living room, mornings in the sunlit kitchen, late night talks on the porch. The front door creaked open and Ethan walked in, looking surprised to see me. You're home early, he said casually but his smile faded when he saw the paper in my hand. Ethan, I said, my voice barely above a whisper. What is this? His expression turned guarded. Sophia, just calm down. Calm down. I snapped, slamming the paper on the table. How are we being evicted from our own home? What is going on? Ethan sighed and ran a hand through his hair. It's complicated. Complicated. I felt my chest tighten. This house is in your parents' name. You said it was just a formality. You said it was temporary. It was, he muttered, not meeting my eyes. But, my parents decided to sell it. For a moment, I couldn't breathe. Sell it. Without telling me. It's their house, Sophia he said, his tone defensive now. They needed the money, and I stood up, my chair scraping loudly against the floor. Their house. Ethan, this was supposed to be our home. How could you let this happen? They didn't have a choice, he shot back, his voice rising. They were in a financial bind, and they did what they had to do. I stared at him, my mind reeling. And you didn't think I deserved to know. You didn't think it was important to tell me that the house we live in, our home, was being sold out from under us? Ethan looked away, his silence saying more than words ever could. My chest felt like it was being crushed. I had trusted him. I had trusted his parents. And now, that trust was gone. I didn't sleep that night. The words on the eviction notice replayed in my head like a broken record. My home, my sanctuary, was gone, sold by people I trusted without a single warning. Ethan tried to justify it, but his explanation sounded hollow, like excuses for betrayal. The next morning, I woke up with a knot in my stomach. I couldn't just sit there and let them take everything from me. I needed answers. So, I called Vivian. Her cheerful voice came through the phone as if nothing had happened. Sophia, darling. How are you? How am I? I said, gripping the phone tightly. Vivian, I found an eviction notice on my door yesterday. Care to explain? There was a pause, and then she sighed dramatically. Sophia, I'm sorry you had to find out this way, but Greg and I had no choice. We needed the money for some unexpected expenses. Unexpected expenses. I repeated, my voice shaking. 
You mean more vacations and spa days? That's not fair, Sophia, she said sharply. We've always done what's best for the family. You wouldn't understand. I wouldn't understand. I felt a surge of anger rise in my chest. You took the house I've been paying for, the house I trusted you with, and sold it without even telling me. How is that what's best for the family? It's not your house, she snapped. Legally, it's ours. You signed it over, remember? Her words hit me like a punch to the gut. She was right, I had signed the papers. But I had done it under the belief that it was temporary, that it was to protect our assets, as she had so kindly put it. Now, that trust had been weaponized against me. I trusted you, I said, my voice breaking. I trusted all of you. Trust is a two-way street, Sophia, she said, her tone cold. Maybe next time, think about the bigger picture before you get so emotional. The line went dead, leaving me holding the phone with tears streaming down my face. I found Ethan in the living room, sipping coffee like nothing was wrong. His calmness made my blood boil. You talked to your parents, he asked, barely glancing up. I did, I said, crossing my arms. And they made it very clear that you were part of this decision. Ethan sighed, setting his mug down. Sophia, it's done. There's no point in fighting about it now. No point. I shouted, my voice trembling. Ethan, this isn't just some minor mistake. You sold our home without telling me. Do you even care about what you've done to me? Don't make this a bigger deal than it is, he said, his voice hardening. We'll find another place. It's not the end of the world. I stared at him in disbelief. How could he be so dismissive? So cold. You've sided with them, haven't you? I asked. You're more loyal to your parents than to me. They're my family, he said simply, as if that explained everything. And what am I? I asked, my voice breaking. Some outsider. Ethan didn't answer, and his silence was all I needed to hear. He had chosen his side, and it wasn't mine. That evening, I sat in the bedroom we once shared, now feeling like a stranger in my own space. I pulled out every document I could find, the purchase agreement, the title transfer, the so-called family trust paperwork. I wasn't a lawyer, but I knew something didn't add up. The next morning, I called my friend Emily. She was sharp, resourceful, and, most importantly, a lawyer. Vivian and Greg sold the house, I told her, my voice shaking. They tricked me into signing it over to them, and now I have nothing. Emily didn't hesitate. Bring me every document you have, she said. We'll figure this out. For the first time in days, I felt a glimmer of hope. I wasn't going to let them get away with this, not without a fight. I sat across from Emily in her office the next day, the stack of papers in front of us feeling heavier than it should. My hands trembled as I handed her each document, proof of my trust, my naivety, and their betrayal. Emily scanned the papers, her sharp eyes catching details I had missed. She flipped through the signed agreements and the title transfer forms, her expression darkening with every page. Finally, she set them down and leaned back in her chair. Sophia, she said, this isn't just shady, it's fraudulent. I blinked at her. Fraudulent. But I signed those papers. Yes, you did, she said, tapping one of the pages. But they misrepresented the terms. This clause here. She pointed to a section buried in legal jargon. It basically gives them the right to sell the house without notifying you. They disguised it as a family trust. That's deceitful, and it could hold up in court. I felt a wave of anger and relief. Anger at Vivian, Greg, and Ethan for manipulating me. Relief that I had someone in my corner willing to fight for me. What can I do? 
I asked, leaning forward. Emily smiled, a glint of determination in her eyes. We're going to build a case. But first, we need more evidence. Anything that shows their intent, emails, texts, conversations where they promised the transfer was temporary. Can you get access to Ethan's messages? My stomach sank. Ethan's been acting distant. I doubt he'd let me near his phone. Then we focus on his parents, Emily said. They're likely to have left a trail. People like that always do. I spent the next few days combing through every email, receipt, and note I could find. I didn't want to stay in the house, but I couldn't leave either. It wasn't just a home anymore, it was a crime scene. One evening, while Ethan was out, I remembered something Vivian had said about keeping documents in her office. Everything important is in one place, she had bragged during one of her many unsolicited lectures about financial responsibility. The idea made my heart race. If I could get into her office, I might find something to strengthen my case. But how? That's when I called Lisa, a friend who had once been close to the family. She still visited them occasionally and had access to their house. After some convincing, she agreed to help. The next evening, Lisa invited Vivian and Greg out for coffee, leaving their house empty. I slipped in with her spare key and made my way to Vivian's office. The room smelled of lavender and leather, a mix of refinement and pretension. I opened drawers, rifling through folders labeled with neat, cursive handwriting. My hands shook as I found a folder labeled Property Transactions, inside were emails and contracts, including a damning email chain between Vivian and Greg discussing their plan to sell the house. Ethan's wife won't suspect a thing, one email read. She's too trusting. My chest tightened as I read the words. Trusting, that's what I'd been, and they had used it against me. I took pictures of every document and slipped out just as Lisa texted me that the coffee outing was ending. My heart raced all the way home, but for the first time, I felt like I had the upper hand. When Ethan returned that night, I was waiting for him in the living room. The pictures of the emails and contracts were spread across the coffee table. What's this? he asked, his face paling as he saw the evidence. It's proof, I said coldly. Proof that your parents planned to sell the house from the beginning. Proof that you knew and went along with it. Ethan stammered, Sophia, I can explain. Explain what? I snapped, standing up. That you lied to me. That you let your parents steal from me. There's nothing you can say to fix this, Ethan. He tried to reach for me, but I stepped back. We're done, I said firmly. I'm filing for divorce. And I'm taking you and your parents to court. Emily was thrilled when I showed her the new evidence. This is exactly what we needed, she said. With these emails and the contracts, we can prove not only fraud but also intent to deceive. The next few weeks were a blur of legal proceedings. Ethan and his parents tried to intimidate me, sending messages and even showing up at my work but I refused to back down. I was done being the trusting victim. In court, Emily presented our case flawlessly. She exposed how Vivian and Greg had manipulated me into signing over the house, highlighting their pattern of deceit. The emails and contracts were the final nail in their coffin. The judge ruled in my favor, awarding me compensation not just for the value of the house but also for emotional damages. Vivian and Greg were fined heavily, and their reputation in Maplewood was ruined. Ethan, who had been complicit in the scheme, was ordered to pay restitution as well. Standing outside the courthouse, I felt a weight lift off my shoulders. I had lost a house, a husband, and a false sense of security, but I had gained something much more important, freedom and the strength to stand up for myself. I used part of the settlement money to buy a new home a place that was truly mine. And as I stood in the empty living room of my new house, I smiled for the first time in months. This time, no one would take it from me.